Welcome back to The Band Guide. I'm your band guy, Colin. And believe it or not, you are completely capable of getting insanely good at mixing. But there might be a few things that are holding you back. So in today's video, what I wanna do is share with you seven tips that will help you get insanely good at mixing. And I know they will because they're kind of the seven things that once I figured out, I reached a whole new level of mixing that I didn't know I was capable of, if I'm being honest with you. And I've also seen all seven of these being problems that my students are facing. And once they start to move past them, they get insanely better results as well. So let's get straight into it, starting with tip number one, which is don't be afraid of being a beginner. A lot of us kind of run away from the idea of being a beginner. We think that if we have a bad mix that we failed and we feel really bad about that, it means it will never get good. But the truth is that everyone starts at zero. Everyone starts kind of bad at what they're doing. If I'd stopped when I had my bad mixes early on, or if I just said, well, I guess this is what I can do and stopped sat around just being a beginner, I would have only ever been a beginner. But if you recognize that you're a beginner and you accept it and you don't give yourself a hard time about it, then with every bad mix you have, as opposed to having a failure, you have a step towards a great mix. Every single mix that you do is just stepping you up until you get better and better and better at mixing. So recognizing that you're a beginner right now is actually a strength and it's gonna help you get better in results. Don't think of yourself as only ever being this good. You're just a beginner right now. Even if you've been mixing for years, but you haven't actively been working on getting better, then you're still a beginner and that's okay. And one of the biggest sentiments or ideas that's helped me get better at a lot of things in my life, but mix mixing is one of them, is the idea or the statement that I'm not good at whatever yet, and that's okay. So just yet, and that's okay. You can add that to anything. When we just had our baby, I wasn't good at changing a diaper yet, and that's okay. And believe it or not, now I'm actually pretty good at changing diapers, right? I used to be really bad at putting little pants on little baby legs. Believe it or not, if you don't have a kid, insanely hard. I wasn't good yet, and that's okay. And I've gotten better, and I'm not great still, but I'm better than I was for sure. But if I just said I'm not good at putting pants on a baby, but if I just said I'm not good at putting baby pants on, I never would have let myself get better. So accept where you are and know that you're gonna get better. That's number one. Number two, think of mixing as a full process and not just a collection of tricks. No amount of random tricks that you throw at your mix that you pick up on YouTube are gonna make it sound great. But if you have a process that you follow and you go through steps in a order that makes sense, then two things happen. One, you're not gonna randomly stumble into a good mix, you're gonna create a good mix. And that's huge because that means that you can consistently make mixes that sound great. And two, because you're working through a process, you can work through that same process every time and you can continue to get better. So instead of just throwing random tricks at your mix, figure out a process that works in the fundamentals that all professional mixes have and do that to your mix and always work through the same process. So if you don't know what that is, I wanna give you something to help with that. I put together a six step checklist to a pro mix. It's completely free from link in the description below and it just goes through the six steps that all professional mixes have and how to do them wherever it is you're making music, whether it's GarageBand or Logic or Pro Tools or Ableton, it's the same steps wherever it is that you're mixing. So be sure to pick it up, it's completely free. It's really gonna help you out. It's already helped out thousands of students and I get emails every day telling me how much it's helping them with their mixing. So be sure to pick it up, it's really gonna help you out. And it kind of goes hand in hand with number three which is that the fundamentals are the key. That is such an important thing to really just pound into your brain because you will drift away from it if you're anything like me. So for me, I got a little bit good at mixing and then I started thinking, well, if I wanna make this better, I gotta go use all this other stuff, these more advanced tools, these more advanced techniques, and that couldn't be further from the truth. The reality is the pros use the exact same thing that you learn when you're a beginner, they just do it better. It's the same fundamental tools and techniques, they're just doing it better. So if you can accept doing more of the boring stuff, the boring stuff, the fundamentals, EQ, compression, reverb, basic automation, and just doing those things better, then you're going to win. Your mixes are going to get better. But if you let yourself slide into feeling like you need more advanced tools, then you're going to honestly just have mixes that kind of stagnate because those advanced tools are not actually helping it. It's the fundamentals that help you get better and just getting better at the fundamentals are gonna help. More complicated does not equal better. That is so important and it's probably the thing that held me back early on for several years because I didn't realize that I was focusing on advanced tools and not the fundamentals. And that six step checklist that I mentioned, six steps to a mix, it goes through the fundamentals of mixing. So be sure to pick it up. Okay. And number four is maybe going to sound a little bit crazy, but it's 
always be asking yourself, what's the easiest way that I can do this? And I know that that sounds crazy, especially if we grew up in America like me. It We love the idea that we need to work hard all the time. And if it's not done the hard way, it's not done the right way. And that's just simply silly, if I'm being honest, especially with something like mixing. You want to be creative and intuitive with your mixing. And if you let yourself get bogged down in making it hard, if you realize that you're making it harder than it needs to be, then you're not going to have as much fun. And honestly, you're not going to get as good of an end result because you made it hard. So then you got into your thinking brain and out of your creative brain that was more intuitive that would have got you a better result in a much easier, less stressful way. So always be thinking, what's the easiest way that I can do this? And number five kind of goes hand in hand with that. And if you've been watching this channel any amount of time, I'm sure you've heard me say it. And that's that less is more. This is a simple principle that is extremely empowering. The truth is you should actually do less in your mixes than you probably feel inclined to do. Now, there's a caveat to that, and that's number six, and we're going to get to that in just a second. But generally speaking, one of the biggest problems that people starting out, myself included, is that we throw way too much at a mix. We learn all these tips and tricks on YouTube, and we just throw them at our mix without any real thought about where it fits into a process. And we end up over-mixing our song or just overdoing it in a way that's really unnatural and weird sounding, if I'm being honest. My early mixes sounded weird. They did not sound good. <laughs> and so what you really want to be thinking is less is more. Can I get away with doing one plugin on this track instead of doing 10 plugins on this track. Now, that said, sometimes you need 10 plugins on a track, and that's why I always think less is more. You want to do as little as you can, but as much as you need to. And that leads me perfectly into number six, which is don't be afraid of big moves. Sometimes that means using 10 plugins on a track to get the sound that you're after. Sometimes it means doing a huge EQ boost, even though you thought you should only do a two or three decibel EQ boost because you heard that somewhere on YouTube. That's the kind of thing that held me back for years. I learned all these arbitrary rules of the way pro mix engineers mix, and it kept me in this box that was way too small and I didn't do big moves when I needed to. Don't be afraid of making big moves in your mixes. If you need a huge EQ boost, do it. If you need something to be way louder than you think it should be, but it feels right, do it. Trust your gut and don't be afraid of big moves. This is probably something that held me back the longest because I overthought everything. I was so afraid of not being professional in how I mix that I kind of half mixed my song. I did all these really small moves and they sounded good, like they were moving in the right direction, but they never sounded like a pro mix. And once I stopped being so afraid of doing huge moves and 10 plugins on a track if, if I needed to, and not on every track because less is more, but if I needed to, I started getting better mixes because I was finally doing enough to serve the song. So as little as you can, but as much as you need to, and don't be afraid of big moves. And finally, number seven, and this is going to help you with all of these, and that's that you want to mix as fast as you possibly can. This is huge and something that I avoided forever because kind of like I mentioned earlier, I always felt like I needed to work harder to do it the right way, but that was just silly. <laughs> and if I just worked faster, I actually would have gotten a better result because because for one, I wouldn't have been overthinking my decision. So I wouldn't have half mixed my songs. I would have trusted my gut. I would have mixed more intuitively and I would have get a better result in the end. So when you mix fast, it helps you stay in this creative mindset and it prevents you from overthinking your decisions and just doing what you think the song needs and not doing what you think you should do or you think you heard someone on YouTube say. Now, obviously, we don't want to be cutting corners. That's not the idea here. The idea is not to cut a bunch of stuff out of the mixing process that we should be doing so that we can mix faster. But if you're working through a process, you're focusing on the fundamentals, you're focusing on less is more, you're always asking what's the easiest way that I can do this, you're not afraid of making big moves, then you're going to get a better result and you can do it in less time because you're going to be focusing on your creative brain and not your overthinking brain, right? And that is really, really powerful stuff. So number seven, what I love about this idea of mixing as fast as you possibly can is that it's going to actually help you with all the others. And it really allows you to accomplish two things. It keeps you in that creative space and it keeps your ears fresh to the song, which are going to help you make better decisions for the song because you're not overanalyzing. You're not getting so zeroed in on the snare drum sound that you focus on the snare drum sound for three hours, which has helped no snare drum ever. 
and it, you are just thinking about the song as a whole, which is really all that really matters. No one is ever going to hear that snare drum and solo. They're only ever going to hear the song as, as a whole. They only care what it sounds like when it comes out of the speakers in the end. So mixing as fast as you possibly can is going to help you get a better mix, and it's going to help you do all of these other of the six tips that I've given you. So let's quickly run through those seven tips, and I'd love to hear from you which of these, if any, but I believe there's at least one of these that has probably been holding you back or held you back previously, as I said, all seven of these are ones that held me back. So no shame here. These are really easy to fall into. But I'd love to hear from you which of these has been holding you back or is holding you back in the comments below and if you're going to start working on them now. So starting with number one is don't be afraid to be a beginner. Number two is think of mixing as a full process and not a collection of tricks. Number three is the fundamentals are the key. Number four, always ask, what's the easiest way that I can do this? Number five, less is more. We want to do as little as we can, but as much as we need to. Number six, don't be afraid of big moves. And number seven, we want to mix as fast as we possibly can. So let me know in the comments below which of these you haven't been doing and if you're going to start trying them now. If this video is helpful, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Before you go, be sure to pick up the six step checklist to a pro mix. It's really going to help you out and it's completely free from the description below. Again, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next week with another video. Thank you